After washing the disciples' feet, predicting his betrayal, and then revealing his betrayer, Jesus speaks of his glorification on the cross. This deep, complicated love of Jesus, even to death on the cross, will be the distinctive mark of Jesus' community. A reading from John chapter 13. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and, the, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little while longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please be seated. In our gospel today, Jesus talks about a new commandment, to love one another. Now, this wasn't exactly a new commandment. The Old Testament spoke many times of loving one's neighbor. But I believe by using the term new commandment, Jesus wanted, was saying that he wanted the disciples to think about love in a new way. No longer is love just a reflection of the law. Loving for the Jews was following the Ten Commandments and the other 600 odd laws that the Jews had to live by. But Jesus wanted more than that. Jesus wanted them to go beyond the love to a new kind of love. A love that will set the disciples and sets us Christians apart as different from others. The kind of love Jesus showed his disciples. Sacrificial love, selfless love, is a love which understands weakness. This kind of love you cannot force into a set of laws and rules no matter, no matter how many and complicated those rules are. Our reading from Acts likewise today spoke of loving beyond the commandments. The Holy Spirit led Peter to reach beyond the Jews he grew up with to reach out to the Gentiles, those he previously thought were unclean. God told Peter to preach the gospel to all people, Jewish or not. We are recipients of that vision and that work that Peter established because we are the Gentiles. Paul also spoke of this kind of love in both his letters to the Corinthians and to the Galatians. The kind of love that Christians have goes beyond the law. He says that Christian love sets us apart from others. What do you suppose Paul meant by that? Well, there are times when ordinary good laws are set aside to make room for love. We all know some examples. A father-to-be speeding his pregnant wife to the hospital is one example. A policeman, if they pull him over, will escort them to the hospital. And perhaps it's even okay to speed if you are a husband speeding to the hospital and your wife is already there. I could imagine if a couple of cops saying, okay, I'll take you to the hospital. In the same way, there may be times when ordinary Christian values are set aside for the sake of love. Now, this is not easy for us Christians to understand. It is easier in churches and Sunday school to talk about the Ten Commandments and memorize Bible verses than it is to talk about love. Love is complicated. Any of us involved in marriages, any of us with families, understand how complicated love can be. So we can teach the Ten Commandments and say follow these ten rules far more easily than teaching people how to love. 
But the nature of this world is not black and white, much as we'd like to think that it could be, and perhaps should be. Because of the, the way that sin has gotten into the world, because of the way things interact, there are almost infinite shades of gray. What we Christians have to figure out every single day is how best to love as Christ would love and did love. So how does this love work? We all know that there are judges who interpret ordinary civic laws that we have. State government, national government, local government. These judges make sure the laws are applied fairly to people. And they may even have the ability to suspend a law in certain cases or suspend a punishment for a particular crime. What Christ has done on the cross is made us Christians all judges. Not in an ordinary civic sense. Our court is a heavenly one. And though Christ is our final judge, we, like Christ, are, how to, are given the privilege and the responsibility of showing how to love people in the meantime, until we reach that final destiny with Christ judging us all. To be a judge of love, what is the most loving thing, is both easier and harder than it is to be a judge in earthly life. It is easier because all the laws of the Old Testament take a back seat to a single law, the law of love. It is harder because most of us who talk about love and really try to love to our fullest capacity and ability understand that to treat someone with grace and love is a lot harder than simply being fair. Paul says we Christians can make exceptions even in our commandments in order to love more fully. To love as Jesus loved. As hard as it is for us to understand, if loving someone means that we have to break a commandment, then breaking it is okay. When Jesus healed people on the Sabbath, he was breaking the Sabbath law because it takes work to heal someone and healing is not resting the way the Jewish people thought of resting back in that time and age. But who today would deny healing to someone simply because it was Sunday? Nurses and doctors, those people at County Regional Medical Center, they follow the law of love. And they would even if they were Jews and devout Jews. The law of love, it's wide open. Does that scare you? It scares me. For that law of love opens up a whole new level of responsibility for us Christians. We followers of Christ are called to a higher standard than others. It's not enough to follow God's commandments alone, even if we could follow all of them perfectly, which we can't. But even while we follow the law, we have to love others while we're doing it and go beyond the law with our love and our compassion. No longer do we follow the letter of the law. Instead, we Christians have to follow the spirit of the law, the spirit of love, which is more than the letter of the law, much more. So what might that mean in our ordinary lives? One example might be paying close attention while we're driving. We all know that it is illegal to use our cell phones to text while we're driving. In fact, the last few days I've seen signs and, and I've heard things on the, the radio that, that say that there are actually more patrols that are looking for people who are texting with driving. Many people are killed by texting every year. They kill themselves and they kill other people. So texting while driving is not a good thing and avoiding it is a good thing. 
and may even be a way of loving others. But perhaps we should also avoid eating, calling, smoking, retying our shoes, checking our hair, or applying makeup while driving. Maybe even talking. Maybe we should even turn off our phones while we drive. Turning off our phones could very well be an act of love. Legally, a rear-end collision is almost always the fault of the person behind. Now, maybe should, people shouldn't follow so closely when they're driving. But perhaps the law of love would mean that we in front, when we see people behind, and even if we don't, we in front should brake gently, signal turns early, giving folks behind plenty of time to react. If they rear-end us, it might be their own fault, but they still can get hurt. And so can we, and so can our loved ones. It may be legal to slam on our brakes at a stop sign, to stop in the nick of time as long as we do stop. But doing so can affect and even frighten everyone around us. Perhaps love is simply courtesy that extends above and beyond the law to those in the car behind us, those in the car in front of us, to those in our car, and lastly, to ourselves. Perhaps that same courtesy should extend to all times, all places, and all people. Now that's hard. It's hard to love as well as Jesus commanded. In all times and all places, then, we have to figure out what is the most loving thing we can do. We need to love, even if that means, it might mean, going against what we always thought was right, as indeed God commanded Peter. We need to love, even if that might mean sacrificing our life and health, as our Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. To follow Christ we may need to weigh one good against another until our heads ache and our hearts ache. Where can we love beyond the rules? Where can we love more in our lives? Who can we love more? It's the beginning of graduation season. Today's grads are stepping out into a complex world. Out there, beyond our school's walls, beyond the walls of our church, things are crazy. Never before have there been so many maddening shades of gray in our customs, in our media, in our laws, in our political system. Things are happening that seem almost unbelievable to me. It may seem at times like anything goes in today's world and that everything is okay if people just believe that it's okay. But I want to reassure you, that's not the case. God still made us a certain way, with certain limits on what we can do safely. If we mess up, we can still hurt ourselves and hurt others badly. Mainly, we mess up by thinking of ourselves first and other people second. Remembering Christ's commandment to love will help us sort out our options in life and help us to avoid hurting ourselves and to avoid hurting other people. With love in mind, many of life's decisions are easier, but here's the catch. Carrying them out becomes much more difficult. Sacrifice, instead of a nice option, a heroic thing, becomes the norm. Christ didn't tell us that love is just a nice thing we do on Sundays to think about when we're in church. It's a commandment, the greatest commandment, every day and every hour of the week. So why should we bother to try? It seems like it's an terribly difficult thing to do. Well, to follow the commandment to love, 
can give us rewards and joys, joys far beyond the satisfaction of following the other commandments. Not to do evil is good, but loving others on purpose, to share our love with others, is even better. More than that, our acts of love, more than just things that we do for ourselves, it will help others, those who suffer, those whose very lives are threatened. The act of love that we have in our quilts here, we may not know how many people are, are touched, are warmed, are sheltered by the quilts that we make here. How many other things could we be doing in this church for people, not only in this sanctuary, but out there in the wider world? Where can we love more? Who can we love more? We are Christ's disciples, and we love like he did. May it be ever so for our high school seniors, for our college graduates, and for us older folk. May the love of Christ within us make it so.